share with you the truth about the Antichrist. Um, the reason why I'm sharing this message is because when you go on the internet and you hear a lot of people talk about the Antichrist, um, they always come up with some superhuman being who's supposed to rule the world and everybody is supposed to uh, be subject to him as the Messiah. And not only that, but it is taught by many scholars that this Antichrist, this superhuman being, he would deceive everybody into believing that he is the Christ. But one of the things that bothers me the most about the subject of the Antichrist is every time we get a new president or something, they always say, well, he's the Antichrist. Clinton was the Antichrist. Bush was the Antichrist. Nixon was the Antichrist. Now Obama's the Antichrist. Uh, and then even out of the country, other dictators and, and people in the world, they have said that they were the Antichrist. The Pope, um, they even said Saddam Hussein was the Antichrist. Uh, Bin Laden. I mean, you have heard all of these uh, different things about who the Antichrist is. But the scripture, let's go to the scripture. Let's see what the Bible has to say about the Antichrist. And one of the things that we're going to learn in this message is that the Antichrist is not some superhuman being who is coming to rule the world and make every person in the world believe that he is the Messiah. That is not in the Bible. And we're going to show you uh, exactly what the Bible has to say about the Antichrist. And uh, <clears throat> one of the problems that most people have, they interpret the scripture with their minds, their natural minds. And any time you come up with a person who you identify as the Antichrist, you have to use your imagination to come up with that idea because nothing about President Obama is in the Bible. Nothing about President Bush was in the Bible. And all these people, it's guessing games. And it's and this man using his imagination uh, to come up with uh, a person who is identified as the Antichrist. And the scripture clearly tells us that God said, My thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways your ways. So we can't use our imagination to interpret the Bible. We can't use, we can't use our, our imagination to interpret scripture. We have to go line by line, word by word in the scripture. And that's how we come up with the answers on uh, many subjects of the Bible. That includes... Um, even the mark of the beast. Uh, but, uh, but the Antichrist. Now the word Antichrist is only in the scripture five times. So it should be easily to um, gain an understanding of what is meant by the Antichrist. It's in the scripture five times and by one writer and that writer is John. The same writer who wrote the book of Revelation. He used the word Antichrist five times in the book of 1st John and also in the book of 2nd John and we're going to go over those five uh, times that the word Antichrist is used in the scripture and we're going to see what John was saying because <laughs> you will find not one one of these verses that uses this term Antichrist um, implying that there's a superhuman being to come and rule the world and make everybody believe that he's the Messiah so uh, it's not in the Bible. So what does the Bible really has to say about the Antichrist? Let us go to the scripture and find out. Because I'm not going to use my imagination to interpret the Bible. I'm going to allow the scripture to interpret itself. And you be the judge. Rather, the word of God is correct. Or rather, I'm interpreting the scripture correct. And uh, it's, it's easily to understand it because I'm going to use the Bible and only the Bible and not my imagination to come up with this, um, the answers that we need to know about the Antichrist. Let us go to John. John chapter 4 is the verse we're going to go to first. The book of John chapter 4. Okay? The book of John chapter 4, and we're going to read verse, verse um, uh, 1 through 6. Okay? First John, first John, that is, chapter 4, verses 1 through 6. And we, uh, see what John had to say about the Antichrist. Okay? First John chapter 4, 
verses 1 through 6. Let the Bible, let the Bible give us the answers because we have been misled on this Antichrist stuff. Okay? Let the Bible give us the answers. John chapter 4, verses 1 through 6. Listen to the Word of God. And get your Bibles and you can read along with me. I'm using the King James Version. Beloved, believe not every spirit. John is saying, don't you believe every spirit? See, every person carries a spirit. And when you speak, that is spirit. And um, so, so when a person communicates a message to you, don't you believe every message he's saying? Don't you believe everything you hear? <laughs> don't believe every spirit. But what? Try the spirits, whether they are of God. So he's telling you to test it, to try it, to test those spirits, to see if they are of God. Because we are, uh, well, I mean, the scripture is very clear that there are a lot of false prophets in the world. Christ said in Matthew chapter 24, when the disciples asked him the question, what shall be the signs of your coming and the end of the world? And we can go into all those signs that Christ mentioned, but the first sign that he mentioned, he said, he said, take heed that no man deceive you. In other words, don't you allow yourselves to be lied to about the scripture. Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come. He didn't say a few, but many shall come. This is in Matthew chapter 24, verses 1 through 4. Many shall come in my name, and what? Deceive many. So that lets us know we can't believe everybody that, that calls us themselves teaching us the word of God. And most of these people with these titles called pastors, they're going to mislead you. They're going to, they're going to mislead you. And uh, the problem with most of us, we, um, we allow the scripture to be interpreted from a natural perspective instead of a spiritual. The Bible is a, is a spiritual book. I mean, you have natural words, but they must be interpreted spiritually. He said, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, rather they of God. Why? Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. So in other words, many false prophets, they teach you the Bible, but they are of the world. <laughs> and, 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 and this is what the scripture is saying. I mean, they have gone out into the world. And in other words, they're just like Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse chapters 1 through 3, especially chapter 2, he talked about uh, the natural man receiving not the things of the Spirit of God, neither can he know them, for they are spiritually discerned. So you have to make sure the person you're listening to is a spiritual person who's interpreting the Bible with Scripture. And so John is saying, Many false prophets have gone out into the world, and they're going to mislead you. They're going to mislead you. They're going to deceive you. Okay, verse 2. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Now, he's going to tell you how you know if that person's uh, communication, uh, his message to you is of God. Here's how you will know. So listen very carefully. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is coming to the flesh is of God. Every spirit that confesses that Christ is coming to the flesh is of God. Verse 3, And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is coming to the flesh is not of God. So the spirit, the communication, the message is going to confess that Christ is the anointed one. Okay? It's going to confess that Christ, that spirit in that flesh of the person you're hearing, his spirit is going to confess that Christ is the anointed one. And when you listen to the average pastor, he's not confessing Christ as the anointed one. Because he has put himself in the middle between you and God and made himself a mediator between you and God. So he's not confessing that Christ is the anointed one. The Bible says, I think it's in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5, it tells us clearly, there's one mediator between God and man, and that is Christ our Lord. Christ is the only mediator. He's the only one that is, uh, is capable and 
worthy of teaching us and giving us the understanding of the scripture. And he does this through the guidance of the Holy Spirit. This is why he said, I'm going to send you the comforter. So the comforter can lead you and guide you into all truth. So you have to make sure the person you are hearing is led into all truth by the comforter, which is the Holy Spirit. Okay? And the average preacher, he has replaced Christ. Because he's saying, hey, if you want to know God, you must go through me. That's exactly what he's saying. And, 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 and we continue to listen to these people. The Bible clearly says that God will pour out his spirit upon all flesh. That means everybody shall prophesy. Everybody shall speak the word of God. That's what prophesy means, speak the word of God. So God will reveal himself to everyone that is born again, that has, that has the spirit of God within them. He will use them to speak his word. So this mediator called the pastor he has replaced Christ. This is why that scripture I quoted in Matthew chapter 24, verses 1 through 4, he said, Many shall come in my name. In other words, many are coming representing his authority, his power, and they shall deceive many. And I think Matthew chapter 24, verse 7 said, And many false prophets have gone out into the world, and they shall deceive many. So, being that this is going to happen, you have to be careful who you listen to. You have to be very careful. And you have to make sure you have been born again so you can uh, be led by God's Spirit and that you can discern that you can discern those, those spirits that are uh, deceiving you. Okay? Every spirit that don't confess that Christ is coming to the flesh, that spirit is not of God. And the average preacher, he don't promote the kingdom of God. He promotes his church. So he has replaced God. In other words, he's not confessing Christ as the authority and the power of God. He's not confessing Christ as the, as the power of God. He's saying you must go through him to, uh, to understand the scripture. And that is absolutely not true. We must be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And God will reveal himself to us individually. Every one of us have access to the throne of heaven. He's, he said, come boldly before my throne of grace. Everyone has that privilege to come boldly before the throne of grace and find help in their time of need. And here in verse 3 he said, every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is coming to the flesh is not of God. So if the spirit in that person is not exalting God and his kingdom and Christ as the anointed one and as the as the, as the only being we are to be subject to, then that person is not confessing Christ. If a man say you must you must follow what he say, and he has his own doctrine and his own belief in his own church, then he's not of Christ. I mean, he's exalting his own little kingdom called church. I mean, our objective as Christians is to exalt the kingdom of God. If you look at the the apostles and the prophets, they didn't establish churches unto themselves and build buildings and, and say this is such and such church and, and, and lay their own foundations. They built on the foundation which the apostles laid. The apostles laid the foundation which is Christ and everyone is to build on that one foundation. But no, that's not what we do. We, we, lay, we lay foundations all over the country and we build these buildings and we call them church and he said, hey, come unto my church. Come, everybody's saying come unto their church. But they're not pointing people to the kingdom of God. They're not, they're not confessing Christ in the flesh. In other words, when, to confess Christ in the flesh is to say Christ is the authority and the power in me. My flesh is now controlled by the power and the authority of Christ. Okay? In other words, that old nature of sin is gone. And now I have a new nature. That's why the Bible says any man being Christ, he is a new creature. The old life of sin has passed away, and behold, all things become new. So if your life is still confessing sin, <laughs> then you're not confessing Christ. You might say you are. But you're not confessing Christ if you're still living in darkness and in sin. 
for your life to confess Christ, you have to present your bodies, as Romans 12, 12 and 1 says, you have to present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to the world, but be what? Transformed by the renewing of your mind. Your mind, it has been renewed, and you're subject to the authority and the power of Christ. That's what it means to confess Christ in the flesh. In other words, I'm walking after the Spirit and not after the flesh. Okay? You're walking after the Spirit. Your life is all about pleasing Christ. And we're going to talk about what it takes to do that in a minute. But listen at verse 3. I'm going to start over with verse 3, chapter 1 John chapter 4, verse 3. And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is coming to the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist. You see? John identifies the Antichrist as a spirit, not some human being coming to rule the world. <laughs> so, so we need to go according to the scripture and stick to the scripture. He said, the Antichrist is a spirit, not a man, not some superhuman being who's going to make everybody believe that he's the Messiah. You see, the problem with, 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 with a lot of us today and we don't understand that Satan's deception is to make us think that everything about the book of Revelation, everything about prophecy, the mark of the beast, the Antichrist, he wants us to think that all of this stuff is future when it's right here, right now. You're going to see it in a minute in the scripture. The Antichrist is a spirit. This is what John says. He didn't say it's some man coming to make everybody believe that he's the Messiah. <laughs> he said, a spirit that don't confess Christ in the flesh. That's the spirit of Antichrist. See, the Antichrist causes people to live in sin. Okay? He's a spirit. Now listen, to, let's keep listening to what the words say. And every, uh, and every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is coming to the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist. So, right here we see the Antichrist is not a man, not some superhuman being but a spirit. Whereof ye have heard that it shall what? Come. This spirit of Antichrist shall come. Now, no, but the next part I really want you to get. And even now already is in the world. Wow. Listen to that. John said the Antichrist spirit was already in the world when he wrote this. So the Antichrist spirit has been here for 2,000 years, and everybody's going around all over the internet saying the Antichrist is coming. The Bible is saying he was already here. He's, uh, he's been here for over 2,000 years now. And, and you run around saying he's coming? <laughs> this, this doesn't make sense. It don't make any sense because John clearly says, every spirit that don't confess that Christ is coming to the flesh, is the spirit of Antichrist, the spirit of Antichrist, whereof you have heard that it should come. In other words, you knew it was going to come, and even now, already is in the world. Wow. John chapter, 1 John chapter 4, verse 3. The Antichrist was already in the world when this was written. So, so why are we saying he's coming? See, that's the, decep that's the deception. That Satan wants you to believe that he's coming. No, he's here. Been here. Let us go further. Ye are of God of the children and have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You see, the spirit of the Antichrist is the spirit that operates in the world. It is a spirit that operates in the world. The, see, see, if you go back to Revelations chapter 12... If you go back to Revelation chapter 12, you will see Satan subjective in the world. I'm going I'm to I'm read that verse. In Revelation chapter 12, if you go there, you will see exactly what Satan's objective was. And we're going to read, I think it's verse 7 or either verse 9. Uh, now it's verse 9. Revelation chapter 12, verse 9. Now I'm, I'm, I'm going to start at verse 7. Because I want you to get a clear understanding of Satan's objective. And there was a war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought against his angels, and prevailed not. Neither was their place found in heaven for them anymore. And the great dragon, verse 9, and the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which, what, deceived 
the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. So his objective was to what? Deceive. Make you believe lies, <laughs> rather than the truth. And this, and this is all over the New Testament scripture. Deception, deception, deception. That's Satan's objective. So, he wants you to believe that the Antichrist is coming when John said the Antichrist is a spirit and he's already here in the world. So, if he was in the world 2,000 years ago, guess what? He's still here. The Antichrist has been here. And the devil don't want you to recognize who the Antichrist is. The Antichrist is that spirit that causes you to confess not that Christ is coming to the flesh. That spirit that causes you to not be submissive to the authority and the power of Christ. You remember when when Christ um, was kind of upset with the people and he asked his disciples, he said, who do the people say that I am? And the disciples said, some of them say that you are Jeremiah the prophet, Daniel. They, they went through the prophet Isaiah and uh, even John the Baptist risen from the dead. But who do you say that I am? And Peter said, you are the Christ. You are the anointed one. He said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. In other words, you are the anointed one of God, the son of God. So you are the prince of the kingdom of God. So God is the king and Christ is the prince of the kingdom of God. So in other words, Christ is the authority and the power of God. And that's what we have to recognize as children of God. So don't Keep yourselves in submissive to this man-made power called church. Don't, I mean, come out of that. Come out of that. Come out of Babylon. Come out of her, my people, and be submissive to the authority and the power of Christ. This is where we ought to be. This is where the true worshiper worships. He worships the, the Father in spirit and in truth. And this is the type of worshiper that the Father seeks to worship him. So, the Antichrist is a spirit. And he is now already in the world. Mm. I'm going to go to verse 5. They that are the world, therefore speak they of the world. You see? You got a lot of preachers speaking of the world. Well, the world. They use man-made wisdom to interpret the Bible. And nine times out of ten, their interpretation of the scripture is a natural interpretation instead of a spiritual interpretation. Uh, for example, uh, when you come, when you talk about the mark of the beast, they come up with this idea of the RFID chip, and these and these Sabbath keepers say, "Oh, it's Sunday worship." They come up with natural interpretations. So, but the Bible is a, has a spiritual interpretation. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that heareth not God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of error and the spirit of truth. So the Antichrist is a spirit of error, not a spirit of truth. The Antichrist, his objective is to deceive, to make you believe the lie of Satan. That same lie that he used in the Garden of Eden when he deceived Eve. To say, oh, <laughs> you won't surely die, but you'll be as God. Hmm. You will be as God, knowing good and evil. And that's, and so, and that's what meant, and, and we, men are denying Christ. These churches, the authority and the power of these churches is not God. What do you think it takes to run churches? Money. Their God is money. And that's what their God is. Because that's what it takes to run their churches. Money. We are, I, I, I'm in ministry. And we don't use money to support our ministry. God is in charge. We, we, we do everything by the authority and the power of Christ, and we don't collect money in our services. We don't collect money. And in and, and the scripture, if you go back in the Bible, they don't do that. They didn't do that. Paul said, you do your collections before I get there. <laughs> That's what Paul said. You do all that before I get there. See, Paul didn't want nothing to do with money. You see that? He said it worked with his own hand. But these churches, they are ran by money. So don't be fooled. Don't be deceived. The Antichrist is a spirit. And he was already in the world. Now let's go to some more scripture about the Antichrist. Turn with me to 1 John, 2 John, and we're going to go to uh, a few verses there. And we're going to talk about the Antichrist. Here's another verse that talks about the Antichrist, 2 John chapter 2. Okay? No, I'm sorry, 2 John has only one chapter. And we're going to begin at the third verse. We're going to begin at the third verse. 2 John, 
the third verse. Grace be with you, mercy and peace from God, the Father, and from the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father, in truth and in love. Listen. I rejoice greatly that I found of thy children walking in truth. You see, the Antichrist is an evil spirit, a deceptive spirit, but the Holy Spirit is a spirit that leads you and guides you into all truth. Listen. I rejoice greatly that I found of the children walking in truth, and we have received the commandment from the Father. And now I beseech thee, lady, not as though I wrote a new commandment unto you, unto thee, but that which we have have had from the beginning, that we love one another. You see, you see, this is this is what it's all about. But most churches are, are full of people with of pride. The, uh, these people are full of arrogance and pride, especially these, these leaders called pastors. They're, uh, and they're not about love. And this is, well, this is what, see, Christ told us all to be subject to what? One another. He didn't say be subject to your pastor. He said be subject to one another. And, that, that, and the only way you can do that is love one another. Because if you have this authority in this pyramid system, what we see in churches, it's impossible for a system like that to be organized by love. <laughs> it's impossible. That's why Christ said, you're all brethren. You're all equal. There's no big eyes, no little use. Everybody is subject to one another. And everybody is to learn from one another. Because if you have this authority and this, this preeminence in the church, then you're subject to that, that authority. And, that, and that's not a system of love. Christ was a servant. Hallelujah. Christ was a servant. He was not. He didn't come as a king, and he wants us to live as servants. Amen? Um, let us keep reading. Verse 6. And this is the love, that we walk after the commandments. This is the commandment, that as you have heard from the beginning, you should walk in it. And that commandment that Christ taught from the beginning, he said, love God with all your heart, soul, strength, and might, and love your neighbor as you do yourself. This is that great commandment. In other words, do unto others as you will have others to do unto you. Verse 7, for many, listen, 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 for many deceivers are entered into where? The world. <laughs> you see, you got these, these pastors, T.D. Jakes and Eddie Longs and Gloria Osteen, Kenny Copeland, all these people, these people have entered into the world. They're not teaching truth. They're not teaching you to repent and be saved. They're not teaching you this stuff. Listen. For many deceivers are entered into the world who confess not that Jesus Christ is coming to the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. So you see, the average preacher, when he has put himself in a position of power and authority, he's saying, Christ, you out of the picture. Now I'm the one that everybody must go through. Wow. <laughs> that is an abomination under God. He's an antichrist. He's a deceiver. Because he wants you to go through him in order to get to Christ. Amen? Listen to what the word says. For many deceivers are entered into the world who confess not that Jesus Christ is the authority and the power of God. Uh, it's not saying that, but that's what it means. Okay? Christ is the power. He's the anointed one. They don't confess Christ as the anointed one. They talk about Christ. But when you really look at what they do, their actions show that they have taken the place of Christ. And it's coming to the flesh... If, the, if, 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 they, if their spirit don't confess that Christ is the authority over their flesh, then this is the deceiver and an antichrist. Look to yourselves that we lose not those things which we have wrought, but that we receive a full reward. Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ. What is the doctrine of Christ? Preaching the gospel of the kingdom. How many... Of these television evangelists you hear preaching the gospel of the kingdom. What is the gospel of the kingdom? The gospel of the kingdom is what John preached. John said, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And Christ, when he started his ministry, he said the th same thing. Repent for the gospel of the kingdom of God is here. That's what he said. Okay? And he said, Whosoever transgressed and abided not in the doctrine of Christ had not God. He that abided in the doctrine of Christ had both the Father and the Son. So you have to abide in the doctrine of Christ. Most of these churches, they have, they got their own doctrine. Seventh-day Adventists, they say, hey, you must keep the Sabbath in order to be holy. But the, but the scripture is very clear. Very clear. Christ said, I am Lord of the Sabbath. I am Lord of the Sabbath. And he worked on the Sabbath. He did 
whatever he wanted to do on the Sabbath. Wow, how about that? And but those Evan Advantage want to keep you in bondage with little rules and regulations. Don't you cook? Don't you do this? You must go to their buildings called church. When the Bible says the true worshiper worships in spirit and and truth, not in some building called church. The, I mean, they don't. They're not, they're not following. The, they think they're following the commandments. They're, they're not. The commandment is a commandment of love. Amen. Okay, listen to verse ten. If there come any unto you. And bring not this doctrine, receive him not into your house, and neither bid him God speak. For he is that bidden him God speak is partakers of his evil deed. In other words, those false preachers who are full of arrogance and pride, don't don't invite them into your house. Don't when they say in your house, I believe he's talking about your body because your body is God's temple. Don't invite them, don't listen to them. Rebuke them. Don't don't support what they do, because if you support what they do, then you're partakers of their evil deeds. Now, let us go to John, First John, chapter two. And now we're going to find find out exactly what the spirit of Antichrist is all about, and how he leads you and deceives into deception. Watch the scripture. Listen at the scripture, John chapter two, First First John, chapter two. We're going to go and we're going to start at verse fifteen. I want you to listen very carefully. Listen very carefully, and you're going to see what that Antichrist spirit is and what he does. All right? 1 John chapter 2, verse 15. And most of us are familiar with this part of the scripture. It says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. You remember, he said the Antichrist spirit is the spirit of deception, that spirit who is in the people who have gone out into the world. You remember we read that. And now listen to this. He said, love not the world. So, neither the things in it that are in the world. Any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. You're not supposed to love the world. Listen at what the verse 16 says. For all that is in the world is the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. You see, most of the people who leave the Father... They are full of pride and arrogance, and they are all about themselves. All right? And this is not of the Father, but is of the world. Verse 17. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God about it forever. Okay? Now he's going to tell you what kind of spirit those people love the world have. Listen. Verse 18. Little children, it is the last time, and as ye have heard, that Antichrist shall come. He's not talking about some world ruler. He's talking about the spirit of the Antichrist. The Antichrist is a spirit. That spirit of deception shall come. Even now are there what? Many Antichrists. He said it again. Even back during his time, there were many people who had that Antichrist spirit. And the word Antichrist, anti means to be against. All right? It means to be against. Christ means the anointed one. In other words, those who have the Antichrist spirit, they are against the anointed one. They don't confess that Christ is the anointed one. They confess that the preacher, the pastor is the anointed one. Because that's who they listen to. I mean, it's absurd. I mean, look, really, look at what the scripture says. Those who are in the world and follow the world example, they are antichrist. That's what he's telling you. If you say that you're a true Christian, then you live after the world, you live after the flesh, and all you're about is, this is why Christ said, if you're going to follow me, you must first deny yourself. Take up your cross and follow me. So the Antichrist was already in the world, that spirit. And many people had that spirit, even during the time that John wrote this message. He said, little children, it is the last time, verse 18, as you have heard that the Antichrist shall come, even now, are there many antichrists whereby we know that it is the last time. They went out from us. You see? They started out confessing Christ as Lord and Savior, but they went out from us. Where did they go? Into the world. You remember the parable of the sower? <laughs> the parable of the sower. Some fell by the wayside. That Some fell by the, on stony ground. But then that group that fell among the thorns. And what did he say? The, the sower is God. The seed is the word of God. The ground is the hearts of men. And so that which fell upon the hearts that were that had thorns, he said the thorns are the cares and the riches of life 
choking the word out of them. Read the scripture. That's what that parable meant. Go to the parable of the ten virgins. Same thing. Five were wise, five were foolish. The wise virgin had oil. They had the anointing of God. The foolish virgin didn't have any oil. In other words, they didn't have the anointing of God. They didn't have light so they can see where they were going in this dark world. And then they asked when the when that midnight, that darkest hour, he said, The bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. There we're supposed to be going out to meet the bridegroom now in this dark world. But we need light. Amen. But the foolish virgins had no light and they had no oil. And they asked the wise, Give us of your oil. No, you go to them that buy and sell. In other words, they went out into the world to get the oil, <laughs> and they couldn't find it. And when the time came that the bridegroom came, the door was locked, and they couldn't get in. And he said, hmm, they went knocking. Open to us, Lord, open to us. Hmm, I don't know you. Depart from me, you workers of what? Iniquity. See, a lot of people who confess to be Christians, they're the workers of iniquity, especially these, these false pastors, these people with these titles called pastor and bishop and reverend. These guys don't teach truth. They don't teach you the truth about what the scripture says. They tell you that God is a God who is going to give you everything you want. That's because they want you to be just like them. But here, listen to the word. They are the Antichrist. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that it might be made manifest that they were not of us at all. These preachers and people who listened to them, they went out. They're not concerned about the kingdom. They're not concerned about righteous living. They're not concerned about keeping the commandments of God. They're not concerned about that. They want a God that's going to take care of their fleshly needs. That's all they want. They want a God that's going to give them salvation that is in the world instead of from the world. Christ came to save us from the world, not in the world. So if you want to be in Christ, then you cannot be of this world. This is why he said love not the world. Because if you love the world, you have the spirit of Antichrist. Okay? So, in verse 20 he said, But ye have an auction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. And I have not written unto you because ye know not the truth, but because ye know it. And that no lie is of the truth. You see, if you look at what John is saying, he's saying the Antichrist spirit is a spirit of lies and deception. And the Holy Spirit is a spirit of truth. That, because Christ even said it. He will lead you and guide you into all, all truth. And he said, I will send you that comforter, that comforter which is the Holy Spirit. And he will lead you and guide you into all truth. But that Antichrist spirit is a comforter of the world. He will lead you and guide you to all the materialism and the stuff that the world has to offer. And that's where that's where uh, the average pastor, his comfort is. His comfort is in the things of the world. His comfort is in the almighty dollar, which is what he collects every Sunday before he preaches. That's, that's his comforter. But my comforter is the Holy Spirit who leads me and guides me into all truth. That's why I understand who the Antichrist is. The Antichrist is a spirit of deception. That's, that's what he is. The Antichrist is a spirit. He's not some big time superhuman ruler that's going to come to rule the world. Don't believe this nonsense. The Bible doesn't say anything about a coming Antichrist. He said the Antichrist is already here. I'm going to continue this message on my next video. So I hope you tune in and we're going to be going into uh, this subject a little deeper. Because uh, in, the book of, in the book of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, it talks about uh, the son of perdition. We're going to go into that on our next video. So tune in on our next video and we're going to talk about the Antichrist spirit a little further. But if what I want to, how I want to end this message is the Antichrist is not some superhuman being. The Bible says there are many Antichrists right now already in the world. Even during John's time, he said the Antichrist spirit was already here. So if he was here during the time that John wrote the message, then guess what? He's here now. It's not coming in the future. He's already here, that Antichrist spirit. And that Antichrist spirit is the spirit of deception, that spirit that confess not that Christ is the anointed one, the power and the authority of God. It is man who have taken the place of the anointed one. 
and he is being in charge of the people ruling over them and telling them that he is the anointed one that teaches them the word of God. And uh, we're going to go into this further, but uh, so tune in next week and we're going to talk about the Antichrist. May God bless you. Thank you.